A very important question was asked. Can we use volumes, but instead of rendering them using the volume measure as smooth meshes, can we actually create voxel grids with cubes or any other object for that matter? And the answer is yes. In this new document, I'm going to go and open a VDB sequence uh, I found online. Here it is, and I'm just going to select any and press open. You can see that we have three volume grids, a density, a heat, and a temperature. And basically, these are three separate volumes with uh, common elements that are going to be loaded in one single object. So let's press OK. You can see we have the volume loader object that points to that file and shows us which grids are available to us. So I'm going to turn off these two. I'm just going to deal with the density. And you can see here it is. I'm just going to work with a few of these frames. Now, this is a fog volume. Don't uh, confuse it with an SDF volume. Go and watch the tutorials on Cineversity about volumes and you'll understand the difference. So how do we make a regular voxel grid from this to render everything as a little cube. So here's what we do first. We try and find the frame where our bounding box, these red little squares, is uh, close to the maximum. And you can see this is the maximum. Let's go to our four views and press Alt H and we can frame them over here. Fantastic. You can't see them because we need to set a uh, garage shading in order to see those little voxels. Fantastic. Now the next thing is get a MoGraph cloner and a cube. I'm going to make the cube relatively small or make uh, the volume uh, rather large. In this case, if I make it 100 times bigger or make the cubes 100 times smaller, and let's press Alt H, you will see that everything now looks a bit better. Let's uh, get the cube and make it, let's say, 20 by 20 by 20. And the cloner, let's set it to multi-instance so we have a higher speed and put the cube in here. And remember, the cube is 20 by 20 by 20. I want to go and set the per step to 20, so the cubes are adjacent. And now let's increase the value so it just overlaps with the larger part of this VDB volume. So let's go to this view, and I'll bring my clone approximately to the middle, and let's grow these ones here. There we go. And let's go over here, and let's grow them on the Z. So now we have enough cubes to fill the whole smoky thing. And uh, I'm going to go to my perspective view and turn on the line so you can see all the little cubes. Fantastic. Now, what I want to do is pretty much only visualize the cubes that are within the volume. So I'm going to go and create a plane effector. And that plane effector I'm going to remove all the values and I'm going to turn on the visibility. And in the fall off, I'm going to go and drag the volume. And uh, immediately you will see that we have these cubes visible only when each voxel is above, I think, 0.5 or something like that. Now, forget about the color. We're going to deal with the color in a second. And let me go and hide the volume loader. And don't forget, it's a density. Dense. Good. And let's hide this. And now you can see... Now we have these little cubes and they just turn on and off depending on the value of the volume. Because the volume has been loaded in RAM, you may get uh, some delays in loading it after you advance a few frames. So this is how we do this. Now let's go and colorize them. So I'm going to make a copy of the density. I'm going to call this. Let's see what other channels we have. Let's take the temperature and let's call this temp and go to the plane drag the temp, turn off the value, and turn on the color. And in the temp, I'm going to go to the remapping, enable remapping. In the color remap, I'm going to set this to gradient. And in the gradient now, I can load any color that represents temperature. So let's go and add heat. And you can see that the hotter parts are now red or black for that matter, and the colder ones are white. So you can go and change this. I'm going to make the hotter ones uh, really bright red. Then let's put something like uh, an orange here, and let's go and set this to a nice cool blue color right down here. And uh, there you have it. We have a voxelized smoke. 
Now the question is, does this work with volumes we generate using the volume builder? And the answer is yes. So let's get rid of that and let's go to the plane and remove these or I can exchange them later on. So very quickly, I'm going to create a sphere. I'm going to make it bigger and I'm going to get a volume builder. Put this underneath here. Set this to be fog. That's the most important part. And uh, I'm going to use this volume builder in the actual object and uh, I can make a copy of this because I'm going to call this density let's say and I'm going to make a copy of this and call it temp or color or something like that and uh, let's go over here drag this into the color and we can go to this particular one and you see it's remapped I'm going to change one more thing go to the temperature and set this to be maximum voxel fall off so that now if I move the first sphere, you're going to start seeing some colors as well. So I can turn these off in the viewport. And there you have it. We create our own spheres, we create our own voxels, or we import other voxels to create this voxelized version that includes colors. I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe, share, like, ring the bells, and uh, follow me on social media. You know where to find me.